السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So what is your question? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You're supposed to lose hope. <laughs> You're supposed to be depressed. You're supposed to think this is it. This is the end. About this world. If you're a believer, you're not supposed to have hope in this world. If you're a believer, you're supposed to understand and experience that this world, it is a torture, it is an exile, it is a separation, it is a prison that you cannot wait to leave. Only in this Ahir Zaman, in this end of times, the reality of this world is coming out. You understand? The reality of this world is coming out because Rahmat is lifted, compassion is lifted, Barakat is lifted. Honor is lifted. Intelligence is lifted. Tyranny, zulm, is everywhere. In this Ahir Zaman, you see all the disobedience of the Bani Adam. You understand? All the disobedience of all the followers of all the prophets from Adam alayhi salam to Nuh alayhi salam all the way to the prophets of the Bani Israel prophets that we know and prophets that we don't know 124,000 prophets how their nations became disobedient to them it is present now it is happening right now so how not to lose hope in this world when all you see around you is a complete disobedience to Allah And because there is Islam is not ruling anymore, not even the Muslims now or the believers can go somewhere to feel comfortable when there is a system that is protecting them. Correct? Because now this is the era of Dajjal. This is the era of complete fitna. This is the era that anyone can do anything that they want and get away with it. Especially if you have money, you have power, you have position. These days you don't even have to have all of that. You just have, you are protected by law. That you can do anything that you want. So, all the disobediences, meaning all the, because with every disobedience, that the followers of the nations of the prophets that they do to their own prophets it is pulling the anger of Allah and it is lifting the barakat and the rahmat so all this lanat of say from Adam alayhi salam to these times 7,000 years 7 days Allah gave this world only 7 days and one day in the presence of Allah is 1,000 years. In these seven days, all the lanat, all the 7,000 years of lanat is collected in just these few years also. We're not talking about in the last 1,000 years. We're not talking in the last 500 years. In the last 100 years something since the fall of the Hilafat, because that Hilafat the representative of Rahmat Alil Alameen, the Khalifatul Rasul, the one who represents the Prophet, and the Prophet is Rahmat Alil Alameen, the mercy to all the nations. When the mercy is lifted, what falls? The anger falls. 
But the anger falls not because there is nothing there. The anger is pulled because people become more disobedient, become more open, openly disobedient. How many more hadith sharif do we need to say to say that this is the end of times? How many more the world has to see? Maybe 20 years ago, everyone was not talking about it. Shaykh and Ishim Allah are the only people talking about it. Correct. But now, it is open. Now, you even have YouTube videos about the Ahir Zaman. But still, no one is waking up. No one is waking up. We don't see things getting better. Because when you wake up, things must get better. But it's getting worse, and it's getting worse, and it's getting worse. Because when the disobediency happens, the nur is going to, the light is going to disappear. Because when things are unclean, things are dirty, the pure ones, they run away to. It is the dirty ones that come. And this is the reality of this world. This is the reality of this dunya. And for a believer to know, now the dunya is showing its real face. The dunya is showing its real face. So how does a believer keep his iman? The believer's faith does not depend on the condition of this world. The believer's faith does not depend on its own physical condition. The believer's faith depends on his spiritual health. His faith depends on his connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That time, if this whole world is nice and peaceful, everyone has everything that they want and they need, and everyone getting more and more wealthy. But for a believer, if he says, if in that situation, when things are good, and there is no connection to my Allah, that is a hell. There is a hell. Has such things happened before in Islamic history? So many times. Every time Islamic civilizations, they go up and up and up and up, and we became the pioneers of the worldly knowledge, correct? We became pioneers of everything that makes this life to become more comfortable and better, whether it is through ilm or through economy or through knowledge or through philosophy or through architecture, through health and everything, you see it rising up and up. That was the time that especially, uh, not so much the scholars too, too much, but in those days, when I speak about scholars in those days, every scholar belongs to a tariqat. Hmm? So the rightly guided scholars, that is the time where they pull out from that society. And the sheikhs, they pull out from that society and they warn people in that society. They say, don't run after this world. This world is a trap. When everything was nice and peaceful, they were warning people about this world being your enemy and it takes away faith. What do you think those scholars and those sheikhs, those alims are going to say now, looking at the condition of the world? They're going to say, what else do you want? What more proof do you want? The world is showing its true face. But for the believer, he's going to get up every morning to check his faith. You know, everything in life has a gauge. You have a car. Your car has so many gauges. From gauging tire pressure, gauging your oil gauge, Correct? Gauging whether they have enough gas or not, everything, it has an indication. That is for one machine, one car. What about this machine? 
there is no gauge? How are you going to gauge? There is no gauge about your iman. And the believer, when he wakes up, he's going to gauge himself, his faith. Where am I today? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in reality, has given us that gauge very easily. Free. 1400 years ago. Five times a day. He has given us that gauge. Every time, in a very specific time, where the sun enters into a different I don't want to use fancy words, into a different area, let's say. In the skies, and certain things are happening in the heavens, certain things happening in the world, Allah is saying, now run to me. Five times a day, he says, now gauge yourself. The wealth is a gauge. The poverty is a gauge. Health is a gauge. Sickness is a gauge. For the man who is thinking, the gauge is everywhere too. The signs are everywhere to indicate his own relationship to his Lord and where he is in that relationship, in the worldly matters. But when religion becomes no thinking, just doing, when religion becomes no tafakkur, no reflection, and it becomes a robotic a ritual action, just going up and down. It's just actions and nothing else. That's the time. All your gauges are broken, but you're still riding the car 100 miles an hour. It's going to crash. It's going to combust. It's going to explode. The believer gauges himself when he wakes up. He gauges his iman when he goes to sleep. That time, for a believer, he understands the wisdom and the hikmat of what is happening around him. He understands that. He understands now, because he understands his relationship to his Lord. If he understands his relationship to his Lord, you think he is not going to understand now what his Lord's will is? in the situation that is around him, in this world. Allah, of course, they are not happy. Believers, we are not happy with what is happening in this world. Don't misunderstand. People may twist and say that, look at this man. He's saying that all this suffering in the world, and he says, good. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that whatever that is happening in this world right now, for a believer, he is going to see not only what is happening in front of him, he is going to see what is happening behind what he sees. And he is going to understand now where it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting things to happen. And where is it that he is putting his will and where is it that things are happening because of man's disobedience, he going against Allah's will and his pleasure. That if you just follow Allah's will, this world will be a paradise. And so for the believer, he will understand the wisdom of what is happening. Because why? The believer is looking at himself and looking, I'm going through this. I understand what is the wisdom. I understand why this happens. I cannot say, well, this is Allah is testing me. So many times, people who are very lazy thinking, Allah is testing me. Allah did not test you yet. You enter into this big problem because of your own heedlessness, your own disobediency, your own laziness. You enter into that area. Because of that, you cannot say, Allah is testing me. Man is living a very unhealthy lifestyle, smoking, for example, 40 years, he gets some cancer, may Allah not test us. And that's why smoking is forbidden in Islam. Later he says, Allah is testing me with a lung cancer. Allah didn't test you nothing. In fact, 
Allah is being merciful to you by not only providing you with the intelligence, but everyone around you to tell you that this is a wrong action. Stop! Or new style, especially we're saying among Pakistanis, anything bad that happens to them, instead of sitting down and saying, where is this that is my fault? Where is this this is the fault of my nafs? Because Allah is saying, whatever good that happens to you, know that it's coming from Allah. Whatever bad that is coming to you, know that it's coming from your ego. This is Ayatul Karimah. But so many, when bad things happen to them, when good things happen to them, they say, I deserve it. Alhamdulillah, but you know, I deserve it. Not to say I don't deserve it, but Allah's rahmat is reaching to me. But when something bad happens, they say this is black magic. Black magic. I cannot find a job, black magic. I cannot marry, black magic. I feel so tired, black magic. So you're not, Allah is saying that in the Ayatul Karima, everything good is coming from Allah, everything bad that is coming to you is black magic. Where you are going to find, where is your fault? You're just running away from that. You're just running away. What, you think black magic so easy is going to touch you if you call yourself a believer? You call yourself a believer. You're praying, you're worshipping, you're being a good one. You think so easy that is going to touch you? Come on now. But it is a big business, this big Sufi business. Correct? Yeah. So now for a believer, when he looks about what is happening in this world, the believer, when he looks that everything is good, that the world is saying everything is good, he's going to shake his head. When everything is bad, he's going to shake his head. Do you understand? More than this, this is something that Shem, Allah, and Shem, and Shem has been concentrating all their lives. Yes. On that level, as a believer, this world is an enemy. You must try to find the wisdom. You must look to your own relationship with Allah. You must have engaging your iman to be strong, build your relationship. Whatever happens, it should not be affecting you so much. Because you know where is it that you are interfering, where is it that you should not be interfering. But on the other hand, what is the hope that we are looking for? Well, that's the thing. Because for the majority of Muslims, the hope that they are looking for is to have a life that the West is having. That is the hope. The happiness is the life that wrong systems that they are supporting. But the wrong things that is happening here and in Muslim lands too is because of unbelief, is because of evil people that they are interfering into something and they're making things worse because they say this is bad, now let's make it better. And people saying, yeah, yeah, it's better. Those are backward people, we're going to bring them real civilization, we're going to pull one zalim and now they knock down one tyrant, now we have the whole nation become tyrants. How are you going to knock them down now? Then they say, oh, um, this is too much of a mess, we just pull out and they pull out. And now things that are boiling and burning for generations. Sounds familiar? Correct? Maybe it is not in their best interest now to stabilize the region. If you destabilize it, then everyone can be interfering. If you stabilize, no one can interfere. For 1,400 years, the Middle East was stabilized because there was no direct interference, because Islam was ruling and there was a Khalifa. Correct? So, what is the hope that people are looking for? Wrong hope. If you are looking for what 
that this world is going to provide. Shaykh Effendi and Shaykh Mawlana has been concentrating to give that hope, hope according to Allah and His Prophet, not hope according to your own ego, not hope according to what magazines are promising you, what hope is, not hope according to what commercials are saying, what hope is, not hope and happiness, what the movies and the songs and... No, it is what Allah and His Prophet, what your Creator and your Prophet telling you what hope is. And they gave that hope 1400 years ago saying this world is going to be plunged into this kind of a fitna. Sit and wait. Hope meaning. Prepare yourself and hope and wait and pray for my grandson to appear. Hazrat Mahdi alayhi salam. We're full of hope. It is what is keeping us alive. And it is prophetic hope. It is not hope according to our own little desires, little world, little ego. And it is something that we are holding on to. Because the Prophet said to Salam, whatever he says comes true. So we are looking at everything that is happening in this world. We are very sad. But we are saying everything in this world that is happening right now, it is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not pleasing to the Prophet. It is not pleasing to the early Allah. And to get rid of these problems is made by evil and made by Dajjal, only the one who is going to be sent from heavens to defeat the Dajjal can solve these problems. No one else can. There is a promise that is given and that fills us up with hope. And that is the real hope. May Allah make us to hold on to our faith, for our faith to increase, to hold on tightly to our shaykh, not to lose our faith in these days, inshallah, to give us more obedience and more loyalty. Wa min Allahu tafiq al-fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.